Hi everyone, John here from Look Smart Home Inspections right here in New Jersey. And today what I want to do is take you guys on an exterior inspection of this house. So we're going to do exactly what I would normally do as best I can with the, um, you know, the phone camera running. And I think that the exterior of a home is one of the most important aspects of a home inspection. The exterior and the basement are probably the two most important aspects. Any area under the house, basement, crawl space, super important. And also the exterior, we find a lot of problems in homes as well. So let's take a look and hopefully you'll get a little bit um, uh, more information. I'm gonna try to just keep the camera running. Uh, just forgive me if I stumble over some words and everything. We're just gonna try to just go through the exterior of this house. Um, as best we can and we'll kind of explain along the way what we're looking for what we're doing what's important what's not important so let's take a look and see what we have okay I'm on the exterior of this home and the we as home inspectors we can get an impression the first time we pull up to a house so the the first impression that obviously we get here is that everything in front of the home is overgrown so this is probably going to tell me that the home is a little bit of a more of a deferred maintenance type of situation. So that's our first clue is when you pull up to a house, things are overgrown. Things are looking a little bit not great maintenance wise. And that's probably what we're going to find also inside the house. But hey, we're doing an exterior inspection. So let's take a look. So the first thing we want to tell the customer about is all of this vegetation that's growing in front of the home here. So number one for security, we, won't, we don't want to have vegetation, tree growth in front of the house. We want to make sure that that gets cut back. And I'm going to recommend to the customer that all of this vegetation here that's growing right in front of this house be totally removed, including the tree um, that's half dead over here too. And we don't want to have trees and vegetation because they can create pathways for insects to find our house, especially carpenter ants. So make sure you're buying a house. We want all the vegetation trimmed away. We don't want anything obstructing the gutters, leaves and debris can fall in the gutters and also cause damage to our roof surface too. So first things first, vegetation is a must do. Now we're going to move closer a little bit to this right front corner and see what we have here. So my first impression here, and another thing that we look at as home inspectors is the overall grade or ground around the home. So we always want to have a positive grade around the exterior of a home, which means that there should be a nice pitch away from all of the foundation walls of this house just to direct our water from the foundation. Water is obviously the enemy of homes. So the better job we can do at maintaining a positive slope around the, all of the exterior walls of this house, the better job we're gonna do at keeping water out of this basement. So super important when you guys are looking at homes or when you're on your home inspection, make sure that you look for a positive grade. We don't wanna see a flat grade, which is a neutral grade, and we don't wanna see a negative grade. A negative grade will actually bring water um, into the home. So this is a siding here, and this is a siding is not a structural brick. This is a brick veneer siding, and that's um, typical of a house, you know, back from the 1950s. I, I like the fact that they're attempting to get this downspout away from the foundation wall. We always want to make sure that we get our downspouts discharging as far away as possible because we don't want to have water collecting. This extension right here you can see is not properly connected. Minor thing, but we don't want to have water just collecting right in that corner. So very important that we address that. As we're moving closer to this house and we're looking for something called weep holes in the brick veneer and we should see these weep holes under the windows and just above about a foot above the grade right here and we don't have any any weep holes here which is kind of common in a brick veneer house this age but what drain holes or weep holes do is they allow any water that enters behind the brick to drain out so brick is a porous material it's not impermeable to water so water will get behind here the brick and we want to have that water drain out there should be a gap between the brick 
and the structure of the home, which we will not be able to see today. But if designed correctly, we should see holes here called drain holes, and that's a defect. And we're gonna call that out to the customer as well. Whenever we see window wells like this that are open, we always wanna make sure that we install covers on these window wells, why? Because water's just gonna collect inside these wells and these wells are a very vulnerable area where wind-driven rain can collect in these wells. So if possible, we're gonna to recommend to the customer that they install window well covers on all of these windows here, just to keep that water away. If this was a new home, we might even have some drainage in here, but we don't. It's an old house, we don't have any drainage, so we always recommend window wells covers. And the window well here is actually, that will act as a retaining wall here to allow our soil to have a nice negative pitch away from the outside of the walls here. So I'm just gonna take a look down here, see what we see. And again, negative um, or a, a positive pitch is necessary just to keep our water away from the foundation. And you can get a kind of a look over here. You see this downspout, they had an extension on it. It got displaced. So now we have water that's just discharging right to the right side of this porch. So we don't want that either. You can see the flat grading right here, which is not good. We always wanna maintain grade away from the home just so we coax that water away from the house. If we look at these stone ledges, which are very even popular even today, we wanna make sure that these stone ledges have a slope away from the window here. So anything, we don't wanna have anything flat around the exterior of the home as far as, as far as trims or ledges because water will collect here and actually try to seep in. So we're gonna point this out to the customer, of course. Any areas of loose and brittle caulk around the exterior, we wanna make sure that that gets corrected too. All our windows should be properly sealed up. Now, this is not something the customer is probably going to fix or even fix right away, but it is something just to bring to their attention because as home inspectors, we are educators. Number one, we want to tell people what's going on with the home, even though it's unlikely that they're going to fix some of these issues. But just education is key. Make sure that your customer knows that that window ledge should have a nice pitch away from the window to direct water away. Remember, water is the enemy. Uh, of houses. So we're just going to kind of pull back a little bit here and then we're going to look at our gutter here. You see the gutter is a little bit, it's pitched correctly, but it's kind of dented. So we'll make a note of that also to the client. But if we pull back here and we go to our roof, we can see that our roof is, is very worn. So we have a worn roof right here and the life expectancy of this roof is roughly about 20 years or so. Um, so we know that we're past this roof life expectancy. So that's something that's very important also for the client to know. Um, and when we get to the attic, we're gonna certainly looking for any water infiltration. But buying a house with an old roof is, that, I mean, you have to understand also that any insurance companies don't like homes with roofing problems. They don't wanna come out and do their inspection and have a roof that is really, really old because you know they may in 60 days, 90 days, write you a letter and say that, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you need to replace this roof uh, because we're afraid it's gonna leak soon and it's not a good roof. So we have a roof here that's past its life expectancy. As a home inspector, I mean, you can just tell. Later on, if I will go up there, but for our purposes right now, just know that that roof is older and will need near-term replacement for sure. So we're going on this right side of this house here. And again, we are looking at our grade is rather poor throughout the exterior of this home. And we're going to comment on these window wells again. Obviously, we want have we want to have covers on those window wells. Overall, the brick looks pretty good. And up here, it looks like we have a whole house fan, uh, which we'll take a look at and run when we go inside. But the idea of a whole house fan, and we see these a lot on 1950s and 1960s homes, is that it, it helps cool the house. So you open a window or door, you put the fan on, and then there's a nice draw um, into the house. And then we have these older windows. So we have these old storm windows. We have all this peeling paint here. 
So when we go in, we're gonna be opening these windows. But the first comment I'll make about these windows to our client is that the windows are past their 30 year, 25 year life expectancy. And certainly when I look at windows like this, I don't expect them to work properly. They're probably gonna be stuck and jammed and we're, we're probably not gonna have a lot of windows that work here. Another thing to worry about here is this is most likely the look of this paint here. I don't know if you can see it, but this type of paint chipping right here is indicative of lead-based paint. So um, this is also a child safety hazard, lead-based paint. So we're gonna bring the attention of the customer that we have lead-based paint most likely in these windows. Now we're not doing a lead inspection today, but I am informed enough to understand that this is likely to be lead-based and a child safety hazard for sure. As we're going this way, we, we, what do we see? We see this clean out right here, and that's indicative of a sewer line cap and clean out. So our sewer line probably comes out the right side of the house and then probably uh, heads down to the street connection here to the manhole. Um, that's something we're not gonna really deal with unless the, uh, the buyer of the house wanted a sewer line inspection, which uh, they do not. So over here, we have more caulking that's brittle and loose. Water is gonna get in here in between the stone ledge and the sill. It's gonna cause damage and rot. So always these minor areas of opening and loose caulk should be properly uh, sealed so we just don't get water in here. As we're moving down here, what do we see? Oh, look at this. We see a, a rodent bait station. So clients are always interested in rodents and animals and we want to just educate the client that this is a rodent bait station and to get information regarding what the buy, what the purchase what the seller of the home is treating for and most likely it's it's rodents that's what that is there so we'll obviously want to report that cuz that's going to be important here we have our exterior air conditioning unit called the condenser it's right here and I'm going to just take a look if I may uh unit's not a new unit for sure and I can tell that from the labeling. And I just wanna see if I can possibly get a date on this, if I could. So I just wanna look at this if I can, and I can't really make out the date here properly. I don't know if you can see it but it looks like that's 19, 2017. So we have an air conditioning unit that's 2000 manufactured in 2000. Oh, actually it's 2011 right there. 2011, this is a Goodman unit. Sorry, it took a little while, but the life expectancy of an outside unit like this is between 10 and 15 years. And obviously this is uh, older. So we wanna definitely educate our clients about you know, the age of this unit. And, you know, they're sort of on borrowed time. This is an R22 unit. That's a Freon gas that they don't make anymore. And at the point where they have to recharge this unit, it's really up to the, cl up to the client or, or homeowner if they want to spend the money on gas, uh, Freon gas that's very, very expensive to replace uh, or to replace the unit. So that's something you definitely want to tell your customer about. Over here, we see the poor grading at the right side of the house again. Here's our exterior brick, whole house fan unit up here. And if we look up here, there's something called, in a brick veneer house, we have lintels right here. So lintels are structural members that support the brick above them. And these lintels actually look pretty good. Now, I recommend the customers that they wire brush the lintels and apply a rust inhibiting paint to the lintels just because they're steel members and we don't want them to expand in the weather. Um, and they expand in the weather and they can cause cracking to the left and the right side of the windows. So these are actually not so bad. So just a little maintenance for these windows here. If we look at the exterior brick a little closer, we have a little bit of cracking developing, nothing really overly, overly significant. We have some open mortar joints, but nothing here that really tells me that we have uh, differential settlement or movement, nothing really that's really earth shaking at the corner of this house. So what I'm gonna do is have uh, recommend to the client that they tuck point these open areas here just to seal them 
I know we'll look in the basement to see if we have any movement or anything, but I'm not overly worried about that situation right now. And we're gonna move around to the back of this house and to see what we have. And looks like we're on a crawl space right here. So there's a crawl space door. We're gonna have to get in there. That's always fun. This downspout is discharging too close to the exterior walls. And this crawl space door is very, very down low right here, very close to the ground. And snow and ice can definitely get in there and cause damage. So we wanna make sure that we keep our snow and ice away and tell the client that this is an area of vulnerability for sure. So as we're going through the back of this house, we see that there's more sort of a lot of vegetation growing and we don't want this. It's really, really overgrown and actually almost unsafe because we can have ticks and flying insects and all kind of bad stuff. So I'm gonna do my best. Maybe I'm gonna have to go around the house again just to get over to the, uh, the left side of the home. So here's another rodent bait station. This downspout is discharging too close to the foundation. We have a really old Bilco door that's rusting. So we wanna take a look around that when we get to the basement to make sure that we don't have any water penetration, but at a minimum that door should be properly painted. We have an old TV antenna that's just kind of laying over here. So that tells me I really need to look at this chimney in a big way because if that thing, if that antenna was on that chimney, it could be damaged significantly. And then there's some type of porch over here. So uh, I can't really see the porch because it's covered in all this vegetation right here. This is not really a safe condition for me to try to access because I don't want to get involved with any wildlife so we're just going to call this out to the client and say that vegetation should be removed. And as home inspectors, what we want to do is we want to call out any areas where we can't see. So take, for example, this porch. I mean, we can't see it. It's all covered with this vegetation. Um, and we just want to alert the customer in the report and to also the attorney that say, hey, we can't see this. Cut all this back, remove it and get that properly inspected. So there's no surprises later. The last thing we want to do is to have surprises later. So if we look over here, we have this tree and that has a slight lean to the home. We don't really want to see any trees leaning towards the subject property for sure. Here's another big tree. So we always want to educate the customers about the perils of having trees, you know, close to the exterior of a home. It's very important to have tree safety and make sure that nothing's going to fall or no limbs are going to fall on the house. And then we can see over here that our grade, which is super important. We always talk about grade as home inspectors. Everything is flat and neutral. So it will not surprise me at all uh, if we go into this house and then we see some issues uh, with water penetration, water infiltration in the basement. For sure, um, that's likely to take place. So here's the back of this brick house right here. I mean, it, this house needs work. Our client understands that the house uh, needs work. It's a, it's a fixer upper, uh, but people, it's, it's still important to have home inspections because a lot of the things uh, that I'm gonna find, you are not gonna find. Uh, and sometimes we bring to light things that you, you guys didn't know about. So it's always important to have that home inspection, even if you're gonna rehab a house uh, such as this one here. So let's take you, and I'm not gonna mess with that situation uh, with the vegetation, and we're gonna take you around to this side of the home here, and we're gonna go take a look at the driveway. So I really enjoy this job. I've been doing it for 20 years. You learn something every day. No day is different. I feel like I'm really helping people educate themselves on the houses that they're uh, purchasing and it's, it's just been a, a you know good career uh, for me I think that I'm uh, very astute at it um, you know I've been doing it for a while and as you do things for a while you just tend to get better at them so I'm over here in the driveway and we're just going to notate a couple of the cracks here a driveway has a life expectancy of about 25 or 30 years Here's our two garage doors. And then you can get a better feel for the uh, age of the roof. The roof is just old. 
It's a general three tab roof, uh, life expectancy of 20 years or so, and it's just time. It's the roof is old and tired and needs to be replaced for sure. Now here's another tree that's growing in front of the house. This tree is too close to the home. That tree has to be removed because any tree within eight to 10 feet of a structure can cause damage, no question about it. These garage doors are older. We'll make a note of that in the report as well. Um, we can see that our chimney has a lot of damage to the top. Let me see if I can zoom in. The chimney cap is all broken. There's loose bricks, missing mortar uh, there. So we definitely have to recommend a chimney mason come in to fix the issues with this chimney. Uh, it's unsafe. You don't want to have these heavy bricks just loose uh, at the chimney top. There's two flues there. One is probably a heating flue. Uh, one flue is probably for the fireplace. And it's just just needs maintenance, uh, needs repair. So chimney work is rather expensive. So that's uh, for sure is definitely going to go in the report as well. You can see the flashing down here is looking a little funky. Uh, flashing is important for keeping water out of the attic and out of the um, out of the garage area here. So that flashing should be replaced uh, with the new roof covering for sure. If you look up top, you could even see a little vegetation at the top of the chimney, which means water penetration. Never want to see that. That's never a good thing. And as we go through here, there's just a lot of debris uh, piled up in front, safety issues. So we want to move this debris, tell the client that's not doing you any favors. Uh, obviously, we have a downspout that's discharging too close to the foundation walls. I just kind of want to look through here a little bit. A lot of junk. There's an old wheelbarrow here. So just try to try to remove all this debris over here as best we can. Uh, very important. I'm going to just take a look over here. So we have some garbage cans that are just placed against the wall. And look what we have here. You see this? This is a oil tank uh, vent pipe that's behind these uh, garbage cans here. It always pays uh, to look obviously very important. So we do have an oil tank somewhere on this house. And with a, with a home from the 1950s or 1960s, it's very possible that we can have an oil tank in this driveway somewhere. So that's super important to get clarity on that before you purchase a home. If you're outside a house and you see a vent pipe like that or a vent pipe combination fill pipe, really important to get a tank sweep performed because we do not want to mess with any below ground oil tanks that are leaking. That's an environmental nightmare and very expensive. So always look behind stuff when you go looking for a house or even when you're performing a home inspection, never be afraid to move stuff. I know in the legislation, it says that we don't move things, but good home inspectors, we're gonna move some things. We're gonna look behind stuff. Slate walkway here needs replacement. You can see it's all broken apart. And this is typical of a house that has deferred maintenance. And it just it's just time to, it needs a lot of work, this property. And But that that's okay. I mean, it's understandable. Um, the people here are probably older and they couldn't keep up with this. And, and I get that. Uh, we're just trying to learn today. So the front steps are broken and cracked. Obviously a safety hazard. Loose stone tops here, obviously a safety hazard. So keep that in mind too when you're going to look at a house. You always want to make sure that the front porch um, is in satisfactory condition because it's a safety issue and you want to make sure that the insurance company is not going to give you problems later on binding your coverage. And here's some more, a lot of vegetation close to the home. No good. Just get all this vegetation back. It's not doing any favors right here. See our iron rails are beginning to get rusted. Let's take a look over here. Now these are, what I'm doing right now is just giving you guys basically an overview. When I do an outside of a home, with a client, it's roughly gonna take me about 45 minutes to an hour to discuss all the problems and, and answer any questions that the client has. So now we're running about 20 minutes. So I don't wanna think you, you know, I don't want you guys to think that, 
um, you know, this is it. We're just going to rush through this home inspection. I'm just trying to make this sort of entertaining so you guys can learn a little bit about what we look at as home inspectors on the outside of homes. This is not a full and complete exterior home inspection. This is just sort of the, you know, the nuts and bolts, really. This downspout's too close to the house. Vegetation should be properly removed. And over here, this is interesting. We see a metal service mast right there. And that's our electrical service. It's pulling off of the house. We want that properly cleated to the home just to make sure that that doesn't pull off and create a safety hazard for the occupants. So uh, that's a must do as well. And then we, if we follow this wire, we're going through the trees. We never wanna have the service wire enter through trees because the trees can cause mechanical damages to the wiring and cause electrical hazards. So uh, that's no good. We're gonna bring that to the attention of the client as well. As we look through here, we have grading issues all over the place. So when I go inside, for sure, I'm gonna mask up and most likely we're gonna see some problems with water penetration inside the house. You can see all this big leave pile. This is not doing us any, any favors either. Rodents are gonna live in here. All kinds of animals are gonna love to kind of make a nest in there. So uh, this really needs to be removed too because that's just gonna retain water and nothing good happens with these big debris piles and all this vegetation on the outside. Again, our downspouts, which are crucially important for keeping water out of the foundation and all out of the basement, are discharging too close to the exterior foundation walls. So let's get them at least four or five feet away. Now this this is likely to be a patio under here and that patio is probably gonna be have a neutral slope. So even a patio, an old slate patio, a paver patio, uh, a, a cement patio, that still has to be sloped away. We still look for positive grade, even on a patio, because if a patio has a, has a neutral slope or even a negative slope driving water in, it's gonna bring water into the basement. And people spend all this money on basement waterproofing contractors, thousands and thousands of dollars, when the first line of defense, frankly, is to control your water around the outside of this house. I mean, that's the main thing is to keep water away from the home. Here we can see the grade is poor. Again, right here. And I wanna see if I can get you a little bit better view of the chimney top. It's a little bit, a little bit sunny, so we're not really gonna be able to get a super detailed picture, but the chimney top does need work 100%. So roof needs work, chimney needs work. And those trees, obviously, too close to the exterior of the home here. We want to check for that. Um, you want to hire an oil tank uh, location company for sure at this house because we found that vent pipe that's very important uh, here. When we go into the garage, we're going to be opening and closing the garage doors uh, as well. Let me just take you over here a little bit, see what else we can find. The driveway, you always want to look for a pitch, a nice little slope away from the foundation walls, uh, uh, from the garage doors. These garage doors, this driveway is a little bit flat. We Ideally, we want a little bit more of a pitch away because we never want to have water collecting close to the garage doors where it can actually enter and get in. I just want to just want to learn a little bit more over here what's going on with this vent pipe. So I want to just pull this back a little bit. We have some debris. Here's our vent pipe again behind the garbage cans. And I don't see a fill pipe. So typically we're going to have a fill pipe uh, with the oil uh, tank. Uh, that's a hose bib right there. But here is our vent pipe. So it, as oil gets in, gets uh, pumped into the tank, air gets displaced under this mushroom type vent. So it's basically an air release. But usually I would, I would have a, uh, a fill pipe, but I don't see that anywhere here. It could be under this debris. It could have been cut or removed. It's very interesting, but I don't see it here. So in any event, uh, we'll call for a tank sweep company for sure. So that's really it about the outside of this house. I hope you guys learned uh, just a little brief overview. Now, not every house are gonna have the same problems um, like this house. Every house is unique. So 
hire yourself a good home inspector, a person who really enjoys their job, one with plenty of years of experience, who's seen basically everything there is to see, uh, and one, a home inspector who's willing to continue to learn and not just uh, pretend that they know everything. I certainly don't know everything. Every day is a learning experience for me, and I just want to get better and better. I've been doing this for 22 years, and I don't pretend I know everything, uh, certainly not. But definitely you're in good hands if you hire me to do a home inspection. And thank you for listening. This is just the outside, a brief overview uh, of an exterior inspection. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the field.